I'm trying to stay out of trouble, huh? Yeah. How long are you going to be? Oh, no, tell me about an hour. Well, I'll see you over there with you. Good night. Here, ma'am, let me help you with this. Hello. Do you know who's our porter? No, ma'am, I, I was just passing by. Oh, no matter. After eight hours dancing in that committee, it's your proper sight for sore. Eyes. I'm ever so grateful. Well, my pleasure, ma'am. I hope you enjoy your stay in Virginia City. Oh, oh, before you pop off, you know where I might locate a boy to assist me, father with his luggage? Oh, here, I'll help him. Here. Oh. Here. Oh. Thank you. Yes. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's that last piece in the baggage book that needs your kind attention, if you'll be good enough. Yes, sir. I'll be glad to. <laughs> Look out. Here now, here. Didn't know I had say that contained irreplaceable paraphernalia. I say, old boy, did you carry it into the hostelry careful like? That's a good chap. What kind of company are you with, Mr. Malcolm? I'm a daughter, the beautiful Princess Natasha. Princess? Exactly. Royal blood. Her mum was a princess, too. Indian. Indian? What tribe? Hindu. The inscrutable East and all that, you know. That is why our lodgings must be in the rear. Not only for privacy, but in order to face Mecca. <laughs> Oh, oh, no. No, just a second. Uh, can't trust my paraphernalia to the careless help around here, old tiger. So if you'll just hang on to that for a minute, then you can ease it right down into our suite. Uh, top floor. Back. Uh, excuse me. Oh, thank you. Come on, Doc. Ooh. That's the top floor. What's been smashing you? It's going to be a smashing climb, I can tell you that. It's the... The heaviest that blame paraffin. Paraffin. What you would call it, I ever did tote. <laughs> you Yanks really like pulling a person's leg, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Set that down there, would you? Gently now, gently. Sit easy, gentle, gently. <laughs> stout fellow, very stout fellow, isn't he, daughter? Quite. Well, if uh, if you folks don't mind, I'll I'll be running along. Ta-ta. Hey, it's a rabbit. Don't worry, I, I got him. I got him right here under the hat. He's safe. Malcolm the Magnificent, at your service, sir. Well, I'll be doggone. Wait till I tell old Joe and Hobbs Inc. that I met a real professional trickster right in life. 
Oh, well, uh, I would much prefer the title of um, illusionist or uh, prestidigitator, but uh, feel free to impress your friends if you like. After all, word of mouth never hurts, does it? Now, remember, on the stage of the Bucket of Blood next Saturday night only. And now, Princess, if you'll see the lad out while I unpack. Oh, and for his invaluable assistance, arrange for him to see our performance. Oh, that would be mighty nice of you. I, I look forward to seeing you do some of them, some of them tricks, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you again, too, uh, Princess. Jan. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Keep her warm and ram one of those down her throat if she gets restless. We know she's good and healthy or she couldn't have come through the mall and she took. Yeah. That's got to be a pretty hungry mom lion to try to chew fillets off of anything as tough as Alice. Yeah. You know, I hate to say anything bad about any animal drums up as much business as that lion has, but uh, yours is the third milk cow he's grabbed at the last three weeks. He got off with the other two. Maybe Paul will get him. <laughs> Take it easy, Doc. Yeah. Uh, you the doctor? Hmm. Oh, uh, it all depends where you hurt, now. Now, Joe, don't start prescribing without a license. <laughs> I'm Doc Dunkett, little lady. What was it that you was after? After getting yourself some copper liniment. Saw your shingle and came up straight away. We got all kinds of liniment. What's the ailment? Uh, stiff legs, I'd call it. Four or hind extremity. These aching extremities right here. Well. A horse of a different color. Horse? Say, what kind of doctor are you? Horse. And don't, don't spook, little lady. The, the doc here is a friend of man or beast. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that aching extremity. It, it's all right, little lady. Just put your leg up there. I'll He's a wonderful doc. Try. Here we go. Oh. I'd say that limb was as sound as a dollar. I think you both the tuppence for your thoughts. You say it feels stiff? And sore and cramped like. Right here. <laughs> sore and cramped. Well, what you need is some liniment. It's uh... Oh, here, you uh, you can get this at the uh, pharmacy or the livery stable. Just tell them the doc sent you. Thank here. you. How much do I Oh, no charge. My pleasure. Oh, which way is the apothecaries? Hmm? Oh. Um, the druggists. Oh, the druggists. I'll, I'll walk you down there. It'd be my pleasure. Good for you. Stretch your legs. Oh. Hey, with the, uh, the miners chase that mountain lion. That cat just doubled right back at them and killed their milk cow. Well? Well, what, Paul? Well, I thought you boys would join me in a mountain lion hunt after supper. Hmm? Well, a mountain lion hunt? Oh, I, I wish you would have asked me a little bit earlier, Pa. I, I've got a date to meet somebody in town. So have I. Yeah. See, I I told this, uh, this girl that I was going to see her after supper. <laughs> you're, you're giving up a mountain lion hunt to, to see a girl? Hey, she must be quite a girl. I'd like to meet her. No, you wouldn't either. She ain't your style. Oh, really? Well, well what's, what style is she? Well, she's got class. I mean, she's nice and refined and proper-like. <laughs> well, it takes all kinds. <laughs> Mine's hotter than a firecracker. Hey, can I have a surrey tonight? Hey, wait a minute. I was going to use the surrey tonight. Yeah, well, you should have asked for it a little bit earlier, because I'm going to use the surrey tonight. Well, couldn't you both use the surrey? Oh, Paul, ain't no way. I mean, my girlfriend would probably be embarrassed to be seen with anything Joe would go with. Oh, really? Well, I think it would probably be the other way around. All right, I'll flip you for it. I got a better idea. I'll Indian hand wrestle you for it. <laughs> All right, come on. Boys, boys, boys. 
And for frontier accommodations, I claim this is top drawer. And I claim I've slept in top drawers that was roomier. I'd be more stretchy spicier than inside that suffering trunk. Stop growling and take your lungs like a sport. Who? Cool. Listen to Goody Two Shoes. Wasn't it uh, that did the grousing in the trunk all the way from Christ New Orleans to Panama? Oh, I'm always crazy to storm at sea. Oh, oh, I can't help it. Oh, I'm always in the storm at sea. I can't help it. I'm always in the storm at sea. Shut up. Now listen, Jan. Uh, now listen, Janice. It's quite true. Your sister is always queasy when she's in the truck during the storm at sea. Well, I'm always bruised when some dull clod drops the flaming trunk off the dear. top of a stagecoach yes. with me inside. I know, dear, but... I, I will not ride in that All thing. right, darling. Yeah, unless you promise All it'll right. be handled with care. I promise. Still and all, the temporary hardships have always been rewarding, haven't they? And Virginia City looks like a real piece of cake from here. Yes, from here. I'll slice it up close and tonight when I steps out for the local chap I met this afternoon. Not off you don't. Oh, I had the morning in the trunk and I'll have the girls. evening on the town. Girls. Girls. That's the not town. fair. Girls. I'll be girls. 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 You know, you can't possibly both go out tonight. Why not decide ladylike? First ace wins. Why don't we just wrestle? No. First fall wins Virginia no, City. Girls, of course, no, girls, you are you ready for go. Mr. Cartwright, as far as I know, the Malcolms are in. Both Magnificent and his daughter. Very good. Uh, listen, by the way, where can I get some flowers like that? Across the street, at The Undertaker's. Thanks. The Undertaker's? Yes. Uh, business has been slow, poor fellow. He, he's overstocked. Been decided, so let's hear no more, shall we? Whichever girl is called upon first tonight, that's the one what slips out. Excuse me, Father, but you'd better work on that trick. This time you did it so well, I couldn't see how you did it. Yes, you're right. It takes practice to become clumsy at a trade. Could that be? I thought you'd arrange for him never to contact us openly. Wasn't his knock three quicks, then two slows? there. It's me. Uh, from this afternoon. Don't believe I caught the name. Cartwright. The gentleman would help fetch me luggage? No, the gentleman would help stretch your legs. Why oh, couldn't I have had sons? Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the bucket of blood, but I don't think you'd like it. Why not? Sounds like a smashing spot. Where is it? Well, there's a family entrance right up at the lobby, but I'll tell you, it is not family entertainment. It's just not for you. Right off the lobby now? Thoughtful. <laughs> to some expense getting these restrainers. They're exactly like those the local sheriff uses. With one exception. We've got the key to these. <laughs> Just hope we do better here than we did on that riverboat. Hello? It's me, Mr. Malcolm. Is, is your daughter the princess in? Who'd you say it was, old tiger? No, sir. Old horse. Did you order an old horse? I'm the one that brought your trunk up, remember? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Um, I thought we'd thanked you. Oh, yes, sir, you did, but I thought maybe I'd show Miss Jen around. That is, if she ain't tied up. I say, old sport, would you mind waiting down in the lobby for half a mile? Then we make it a big mistake. How's that? Using that haunch of venison for bait. The only thing that old lion has tackled lately is milk cow. I'm not gonna use milk cow for bait. I didn't say we should. I only say we ain't getting anywhere this way. And I'll just bet you a box of shells that that old lion ain't within 10 mile of here. I'll take that bet. What bet? Ha, <laughs> ha, 
Mr. Cartwright? No. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Why? About what? A Princess Natasha. Jan. Locked into one of those situations she couldn't possibly wriggle out of. You understand? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, she asked if you would uh, present yourself on the morrow instead. In the meantime, I would uh, like to buy the bitters. The bitters? Uh, the innkeeper gave me to understand there was a convenient pub. Uh, shall we? Oh, yeah. The decor looks to me a little Indian. I was there during one of the uprisings. It poisoned all the wells. Got myself a pretty tough shot, huh? Well, uh, knowing nothing whatsoever about billiards, it still seems to me that if you put a little English on the, the cue ball, the eight ball would go into the corner pocket and the, the 12 ball would go into the... The side pocket and the, um, the cue ball would go all the way around the table and sink the 14 for good measure. Uh, Jan, it, it's not that easy. Yeah. See, the, the 12 ball is frozen against the cushion, the 8 ball is frozen on the 12 Come ball. Come on, play now and explain later. Unless, of course, you want the girl to take that shot for you. Very funny. All right. Let's see if you're as free with your money as you are with your tongue, Mr. Sore Loser. You want to bet your gent can make that shot? I want to wager a bob. Even I can make it. I don't bet with no woman. Then how about betting with me? Look, Rankin, I already paid you for my lesson in poker. But you can't stack pool balls like you deal bottom cards. Uh, uh, fellas, it's my shot. I say you're a loser in anything you try, friend. And if you claim the little lady can't put the eight ball in the corner pocket, I'll just bet you 50 silver eagles she can do it. You got yourself a bet, Rankin. Hey, now, wait a minute. Yes. Anybody else? Let my gentleman friend have some of that bet. Excuse me. Uh, Jan, I wouldn't. Would you? Thank you. Thank you. You want ten of this? <laughs> Twenty. was a heck of a shot. Gentlemen, uh, pay me. Two more bitters here, please. What? Oh, you know, I... No more until they hear the clink, clink, clink. You haven't paid for the first round yet. Bernie, I'll get them and I'll get the next one, too. I wouldn't hear of it. These drinks have been paid for. Are you trying to deadbeat me? Mr. Malcolm, I think... My... Poor misguided friend. Don't you remember I laid the money on the bar and you tucked it in your nose? You were saying? I was saying you owe me for the drinks. What's this? Well, that's half a crown, British coin of the realm. It's no good here. Wait of that. That's, that's all right, Mr. Malcolm. Bernie, I'll, I'll get them. And much more, too. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, uh, if you insist, uh, thank you. <laughs> I'll have the same. Well, I never heard of an old lady shooting the pool and rolling dice. Oh, really? What'd you and your girlfriend do for fun? Go look at a statue of General Bernie Epstein, or did you go all out and visit the old Indian burial ground? I minded my own business, little brother. Just like I'm going to do today when I've got the surrey. Fine, but if you're going to court that little lady in broad daylight, if I were you, I'd take her to Wishing Crick. At least that way she can wish for something exciting to have. Go on, Paul. You just get into? No, I, uh, I was just leaving. Oh, I could do some of that. Yeah. Did you uh, get that big cat? Mm. Kept in it all night. Never saw it. Oh, this is so, uh, old Staley coming in. Said that cat got one of his milk cows last night. The only way that cat gets around is like magic. Magic. Oh, uh, listen, if you'll excuse me, Paul, I've got to see somebody. I'll see you later. Well, how was your hunting, Joseph? It's fine. I guess you could say I came out ahead of my game. <laughs> How about some breakfast, then? Yeah. Who is it? <clears throat> Mr. Cartwright. Cartwright? 
show. Janice, look at the door. Stay out of sight, Jan. It's my caller. Didn't expect to see you so early, Mr. Ca Mr. Cartwright? Yes, ma'am. Your, uh, your pa told me that you were temporarily indisposed last night and that, that you'd see me on the morrow. And this is the morrow. Ain't it? Oh, yes. Well, caught me temporarily indisposed again, haven't you? Uh, yeah. Just about to pop in me bath, I was, as you can see. Yeah, I, you want me to wait down in the lobby, I reckon. Would you? I'll be down and off. I know, I know. Off a mo. <laughs> <sighs> That's the beatenest dang thing I ever did see. I reckon that must be the fastest half a mo anybody ever did scrub and tub in. Well, didn't want to waste a precious second. Any thought of where we might go? Oh, I've been giving it some serious thought, ma'am. Some real serious thought. You know, Virginia City is a pretty good-sized town. There's a lot of cultural things a lady like you ought to see, like maybe uh, General Bernie Epstein's statue, or the Indian burial ground, or, or maybe the Wishing Creek. Uh, then Wishing Creek it'll be. No, Elsa, no. That's the right card. Now, look, if you insist on doing the trick correctly, you'll ruin everything. You know I wouldn't contact you if anyone was following me. Hello, Elsa. Where are your other two birds? Shh, keep your voice down. Janet is in there catching 40 winks, and Jan's seeing the sights with some local toff. I saw Janice last night. I know you did. I know you did. And I expect a cut of the boodle you made betting on her. Here, you can add it to this when you bet it all against me tomorrow night. You sure you can pull your trick off with the sheriff watching? <laughs> Suppose your hand is not quicker than the eye of the law. Confidence, dear old boy, confidence. It's in the bag. Or rather, shall we say, in the trunk. Well, here we are. Come on in. When we started out, you said Wishing Creek. Yeah, well, we're going to Wishing Creek, but this is on the way. It won't take just a minute. You mentioned something about your father being here. Yeah, you, you like him too. Hey, Paul! Paul! Come on down there. Somebody wants you to meet. He's not here. No, he ain't. That's funny. He's out hunting mountain lion all that last night. Hey, and there was um, a Chinese cook, I believe. Yeah, Hop Singh. I'll get him. Hop Singh! Hey, Hop Singh! Hop Singh! He's not here either. Oh, hey, that's funny. But I'll get something to eat if you're hungry. No, thanks. And I don't want anything to drink either. All right, why don't, why don't you just make yourself? I, I think we'd better go to Wishing Creek. Yeah, we go. Let me get this rifle. I'll show you this rifle. You did say rifle. Yeah, what'd you think I said? Etchings. <laughs> I just want you to take a look at this. Here, you can hold it. Take a look at it. Oh, thanks. I'd rather you held it. This old engine that I got this off of claims he got it off an engine. See, there's his crest right there. That's his coat of arms. I say, that's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd be interested. You being an Englishman and all. Well, I reckon we better be off to Wishing Creek. Is that all? Yes, ma'am. That's, that's it. There really aren't any etchings. No, I ain't got no etchings. Look, I, uh, <clears throat> I think we, uh, we better be on our way to Wishing Creek, don't you reckon? I reckon so. You all right? I'm beginning to wonder. Oh, 
on it, Miss Jan. I just got to tell you one more time how sorry I am about you falling into the creek and losing your shoe and all. You should have put your arm around my waist to steady me when we were crossing those slippery rocks. Oh, ma'am, I couldn't do that. This is only our first date. Oh, that does make a difference. So I guess it could have happened to anyone. It wouldn't happen to just anybody. It wouldn't happen to my little brother, Joseph. He's a good-looking member of our family. Yes, I know. But you... Bless you. When did you see him? Oh, uh, uh, just last night. Oh. So you were out with him last night. Well, fat figures. They ain't nothing pretty ever misses them big brown eyes of his. You've got nice eyes too, horse. They're blue. Baby blue is my favorite color. Oh, sure enough. Uh-huh. Hey, I'll tell you what. Tomorrow, we'll do something really romantic. We'll go out to the engine barrel ground. They got skulls, bones, and everything. Sounds smashing. Good, come on. Ma'am, I'll see you tomorrow. Good day. done the same thing. Besides, I didn't figure she was your type. What do you know about her type? Nice, refined, delicate lady like that, soft. <laughs> soft? You gonna call that girl soft? <laughs> well, I can tell you this one, though. When I held her in my arms, she was as soft and limp as a diamond. Is that right? Well, how come when I held her in my arms, she had muscles as hard as sourdough biscuits? I'm sure she was tensing up against you, but she melts for me. Oh, that's funny. Hey. Who are you talking about? Jan Malcolm, Paul. Uh -huh. You both caught in the same young lady? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we didn't know it at first, but we do now. She must be quite a young lady to keep you both on the spring. She's just wonderful, Paul. And besides that, she's out of town. She's from England, huh? Well, she's also from India. It's out of town. I'll tell you one thing about her. You have a pool cue or a deck of cards like a riverboat gambler. Yeah, but she can, she can, she can play a harp, and cameos, write poetry, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, she, she knows all the salty sea chanties that have been sung. And that she can quote the Bible, scripture, and verse. <laughs> She's the most talented person I ever heard of. Yeah, well, yeah, she ought to be. You know, her father's a magician. A magician? Yeah, the, uh, what's that? Magnificent Malcolm. Of course, I heard there was an illusion show in town this week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tonight, Paul, and... I've been invited as her guest. What? I have been invited as her guest. Oh, really? Oh, well, I have been invited as her guest. What? I said I have been invited as her guest. Ooh, this young lady is going to be very busy tonight. Keep sewing, boys. Keep sewing. Don't you think that out of a town of several thousand pigeons, my bright daughters could pick out a pair that wasn't brothers? Oh. Listen, Jan and I pick the Cartwright boys like apples pick a farmer. Oh, well, small moment. What those blokes don't know can't hurt us. As a matter of fact, their rivalry might help. Yes, that's right. Love may be blind, but it's always positive. Yes, and after the Cartwrights certify the miraculous teleportation... All right, Molly, oh, be in the trunk, come on. No, no. Well, I don't muck about, Molly, we get inside. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, uh, come oh. in, come in, old chap. Uh, howdy, Miss Malcolm. Howdy, Miss Jen. It's me again. Yes, of course. Uh, recognized you right off. I, uh, I brought you a little replacement for that item you lost this morning. Really? Yeah. How considerate. What was it I lost again? Uh, your left boot. Size four and a half triple A. 
Four and a half, triple A. <laughs> it's exact size. I knew that because you left the bill of sale there with the bootmaker when you bought them. Eat or trammel. You just slip right into it. That's right, Jan. Easy to hum. Yeah. That's the way it's supposed to be. Come on, try it. Here. Walk on. There you go. Comfortable? Yeah. yeah. Well, I got to get over to the barbershop and get ready for your performance tonight. <laughs> Jolly good show. Oh, I bet it is. I'm really looking forward to getting really food. Uh, yes. <laughs> we'll try our best. <laughs> yeah. Here, let me show you exactly where your table will be. Ta-ta. Oh, yes, ma'am, and, uh, and ta-ta to you, too. Jan! I <laughs> kick your boots off me, I can feet. I was just passing by. I thought I'd stop over and say hello. Hey, let me, let me uh, help you on with that boot. Oh, uh, don't trouble yourself. Oh, don't I'll be just, silly. No trouble at all. Yeah, sit right down there, huh? Hey, that's kind of cute. Here, let me have your foot. I have this on in a jiffy. Oh, that beautiful little foot of yours. <laughs> they kind of... They really make them tight, don't they? I shoot, Ben. Dead center? Yeah. I wouldn't let those milk cows out the pasture. Hurry up, ducks. I'm hurrying, Dad. I'm hurrying. All right. I wish you'd hurry up and get me out of here. Virginia City is proud to welcome the world's most renowned necromancer, doctor of oriental occultism and acme of abracadabra, the magnificent Malcolm. Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, what does they say in the mysterious East? Sim Salah Bim. Before I begin my phantasmagoria of incomprehensible feats, I will materialize from the thin atmosphere my magical walking stick. Are you ready? A one, a two, a three. <laughs> And now I would like to introduce my assistant, the poultry tuginous, Princess Natasha! <laughs> What she's gonna do, recite poetry or play the harp. Oh, please, please, ladies and gents, your kind indulgence, I beg of you. I will now attempt to prove the impossible. And not only when I cut this ordinary piece of cord into two halves, I will miraculously restore them into one again. Are you ready? Abracadabra. <laughs> Are 
use a cone made from an ordinary newspaper and a pitcher filled to the brim with wholesome milk. Behold! illusion for which I was awarded these medals, after flabbergasting the crowned heads of Europe, I will, without the aid of moisture or fertilization, cause this beautiful example of nature's handiwork to grow 15 feet before your very eyes on the count of three. Are you ready? One! <laughs> and gentlemen, I will prove to you that the hand is quicker than the eye with this ordinary pack of playing cards and this small but a deadly weapon. Are you ready? Oh. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed... <laughs> There's no danger to human life or limb. Ball! Ball! Please, please, I must have your undivided attention if I am to be successful with this next experiment. And we must ask for our money back if you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cotton, please. The most difficult part of this feat is finding an honest man who will guarantee its authenticity. I suggest to you that here are two young men of impeccable honesty, Hoss and Joe Cartwright. <laughs> Sheriff to join these two men on the stage. Oh. And now our two volunteers will tie the Princess Natasha, gentlemen, if you will pay attention. They will tie the Princess Natasha so that she is absolutely immovable. Tie her securely, lads. Um, Splendid, splendid. And now, Sheriff, if you please, use your handcuffs to lock the princess's royal wrists in the front of her. You are princess, it won't hurt much. And now, place the captive princess into cabinet number one. I thank you. <coughs> uh, lower huh? And now, my lad. If you will place this black hood over her precious head. I thank you. Very, very good. Now we will close a cabinet number one. Chain it and padlock it securely. Now that is it. Uh, splendid. Uh, securely now. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, my three incorruptible witnesses will accompany me to the opposite side of the stage and to cabinet number two. I thank you, gentlemen. And now, kind friends, I must insist upon a deathly hush, for what I am about to do not only flies in the face of logic, it also defies the laws of gravity, inertia, and metabolism. Are you ready? On the count of three, I am going to teleport our captive princess, Natasha, from cabinet number one, across the stage, into an inside cabinet number two. No, you can't do it. Whom says I can't? I do. And this $500. Mr. Rankin, this is not a riverboat. And this charlatan is no magician. I'll bet $500 he can't do what he says he can do with all you good people watching. All right, chum. You've stung me professional honor. You've got a bet. And anyone else of your doubting Thomas friends who wants to wager, I will cover all bets. And our hotel manager will pass amongst you, collecting the money while our good sheriff keeps a tally. Ten bucks 
So be it. Sim Salabu, Alakazu, Alakazam, Sim Salabam. Princess, have you re materialized? Yes, I have. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, if you will. Gentlemen, if you will lower the princess once again. Oh, wait a minute. How do we know it's the same girl? Yeah. Yeah. Take the little uh, uh, Mr. Cartwright, if you please. <laughs> and now, gentlemen, if you will lower our princess Natasha back into cabinet number two, replace the hood. <laughs> And now, please close once more cabinet number two. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I will teleport our captive princess from cabinet number two back into cabinet number one. Sim Salabam. Sim Salabu. Sheriff, if you will be so kind as to release cabinet number one. The key. Ah, oh, thank you. Gentlemen, if you will. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, take off her I ain't gonna believe it till I see with my own eyes. Gentlemen, if you please. Hey, you got... Thank you. I appreciate that. Malcolm. Yes, Mr. Cartwright? Your daughter lost an earring. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. It was never my intention to keep your money. I simply wanted to prove to you the folly of betting against a professional trickster. And now, Sheriff, if you will. I thank you. Get the rope off. I thank you. Rankin, you're going to find that Arizona is a much healthier climate for your throat. My throat hasn't given me any trouble. You just come back to Virginia City again, will you? And as for you, Mr. Malcolm, make sure that our Nevada sun never sets on your part of the British Empire again. Exactly how far is Carlson City? Never mind. <laughs> I kind of hate to say goodbye. Yeah, but I, I reckon we got to. Yeah. Lots of luck. Yeah. Been fun knowing you. Yeah, I, I get yours.
sort of on my mind, you know, that, uh, that gal you were both sparking, what, uh... You mean, uh, Malcolm the Magnificent's daughter? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> gal who can shoot pool and quote the Bible and play the harp and sing sea shanty. Why, it's not somebody you forget in an awful hurry. Well, uh, as it turns out, Paul, she wasn't just a she. What? Well, well, what he's trying to say is that she couldn't do all the things we thought she could do. Oh. Yeah, you know how she acted like two opposite gals? Because she was two opposite gals? <laughs> yeah, twins. Twins? Twins. <laughs> really put one over on us, huh? That's why I'm so confusing. <laughs> twins! <laughs> no one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that, that's about the whole story, I want you to finish my beer. <laughs> uh, pardon me, ma'am. My, uh, my name is Joe Cartwright. I... Toby out, Sheriff. Let's have a look at the killer. Fanny Williams, now look here. This man is not a killer until he's been convicted, and this trial has only started. Judge and jury gone to lunch. Come on, fetch him out. We'll help you walk him to jail. <laughs> Give him wings, Sheriff, and they'll make a fine bunch of vultures, won't they? And if we'd take you to jail, we'd just be leading a parade. Gibson, better put him in the cell in the basement. I'll have some food sent in. Here you are, Mr. Cartwright. Volume one, Yankee Meadows. Thank you, Kelly. It's just what I need. This courthouse is built over the Golconda mine. I sure hope they don't intend to do much blasting below us. I thought they weren't supposed to blast near the surface. Well, they're not. Well, it's just a bigger one than usual. Well, thank you, Kelly. I'm glad that's over. Yeah. Kelly! Happy birthday, darling. And a surprise. A picnic basket prepared by the chef of Nevada Club, chicken and wine. And I've, uh, I've made a special reservation for the Willow Grove, back of the opera house. Oh, I'm delighted. But I thought you had to be on the witness stand. I was, but I've been dismissed. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, Jonathan Pike, my fiancé. Yes, of course. We've met before. Yes, we have. How are you? Well, I'm not at my best. It's not very pleasant to sit there knowing that your testimony is going to put a rope around a man's neck, even though it's richly deserved. 
Well, it's nice to see you again. Johnny, Bristol Toby did kill Mr. Wilderson. Yes, I know, but it's... It's all over now, and I can think of better things to talk about. Mr. Cartwright, will you be all right? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. What's he doing? Sir? Putting him in that cell there, sir. Come on, step lock, please. Liar! Mr. Cartwright, hold me! Liar! They haven't hold me yet! Johnny, did he hurt you? No, he didn't touch me. Thanks, Mr. Cartwright. Now, if you behave, I'll take those cuffs off so you can eat. Give you a hand. You're not going to make it. I know what to do. Let me out. Oh, wait. Get him. Can let him out. You can't, Mr. Cartwright. He's a murderer. Mr. Cartwright, I'm not to make a mistake. I need something for a lever. You'd have been underground for ten years. All right. Uh, Peacock, put your hands on this. Come on. Put your hands on it. Okay, Sammy? Mrs. Connor, she was in the county clerk's office. Well, Doc Hill's gonna take care of the injured in the saloon just up the street. I think that's a lot. Well, did you go into the basement? No. 
Well, I know that there's my deputy down there and his prisoner and the lady that's taking care of the record. And whoever else might be down there. Get down there and check, will you, please? Please stand back, folks, please. Then give me a hand, will you? Yeah, I'll be glad to give you a hand. Not you. You're not in good condition. All right? Walk her right around and we'll block this porch off. She's got a broken arm, Doc. Bring her right over here. How many more are trapped down in there? Oh, I don't know. I heard it cave in and just started running. Uh, easy. Uh, easy. Uh, Hoss. Uh, Hoss. Cut right. I gotta tell him. Tell him what? I gotta talk. <laughs> you better get Hoss caught right over here, right away. Right, Doggy. Get a blanket. That's how. He's only to put under his head. Oh, good. Good. Logan, you all tied off? No, Roy. Those mine shafts down there must be caving in. That whole floor seems like it's sinking, don't it, Bob? Bad. Bob, go see if you can find Arch Tremaine. You know, Galconda superintendent, and get him over here fast. He really understands about these cave ins, and we need all the expert help we can get. Right. Oh! Oh! Mrs. Connors wants to talk to you. It must be important. Doc said come right away. Fine, I'll tell you something you can do for me. Right out and get Candy and Little Joe for me, will you? Sure, Oss. Hold that right there. Hoss, over here. Your, your pa. Yeah, what about him? Did you get him out? Out of where? The record's vault in the basement. He went down with Kelly McGill just before. not your property. Keep your hands off it. Ain't the condemned man entitled to a hearty meal? Take it easy on it. We may need it later. We could be here a long time. They may never come. Eat up. Hey, Peacock. Why are you trying so hard to have me hung? I told the truth about you. And you're a liar. Now shut up, both of you. You say so. Is it getting hard to breathe in here? Or am I imagining it? A little. It'd help if we uh, turned out some of the lamps. It's a good idea. Let's put them all out. I'll accept that one. The one back there.
major cave ends in this stove here between the 100 200 foot level. That's almost directly under the courthouse. Main, what about the basement? There's four people down there. Well, there's bound to have been a lot of slippage in through here. Those vault walls may have held, they may not have. Any survivors down there, we won't know till we get down there, and that's going to take a while. Well, why are we after it? I mean, what are we doing just standing around here? Well, I know how you feel, Hoss. My pa's down there, I'd be raising cane, too. Pa's down there. Paul and three others down there. Oh, aren't you over there getting them out? Well, we're going to, Joe. We got to go about this careful. I'll tell you what I need. I need five or six good men to work with me in the courthouse. And the rest of you'd be more help if you'd help stack that wreckage out in the street. Well, you got three right here. Well, fine. How about you, Charlie Rutledge? You bet. again, I might be able to use that Irish luck of yours. Yeah, and me, Barry Williams, ready for duty. Hogan, you'll do. All right, that ought to be enough for now. Let's get going. Pa, oh, so tell him I can, I can help. Not now, Benny. You're in no condition. No, no, but I never stick a stone in there. The air's bound to get a bit stale down here. Well, you'll have us out of here in no time. What if they don't realize we're alive? Then they'd have no reason to hurry, and it could take Dr. them Callie, days. They're not going to assume that we're dead. They'll get us out of here. Well, we can't be sure. Callie, what? Callie, 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 darling, don't worry. What Mr. Cartwright says. Shh. Hey, darling, don't worry. They can't help but hear that. We'll be out of here in a few hours. If nothing stops that clock. Soon you didn't work in there anymore. We don't know how strong that floor is. Right. Well, we've got to clear this wreckage out of the center of the room. Otherwise, the whole thing's going to cave in and kill everybody down there. Now, listen to me, all of you. This wreckage here in the center of the room is dead weight hanging over that basement vault. Now, the support beams may already be gone, or it may just be holding by a hair's breadth. We cannot put any more weight on the center of this room. We've got to clear out this wreckage first, then we'll get to the stairwell. You all got that? What do we do now? Like I said... Clear out the center of the room first, and then we get to the stairwell. Now hop to it, but walk like you're walking on eggs. Joe, the support beams under this section may be gone, so take it easy. 
Rest you men form a chain and get this wreckage out the street. Set the timbering a fire in the mine. Better move the deputy. Give me a hand. Let Mr. Cartwright leave the blanket. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Pull, pull. Miss Kelly! Tear that blanket into strip. That's a good lass. It might even keep us off from choking to death on the smoke. Finish here. You'd make a better signal man than the one we've got, right? enough. For once, things have come out even. <coughs> oh, it's so hard to breathe. Is he really that bad? It'd be easier if you breathe shallow. Don't try to move too much, all right? The fools, they must all be deaf. Joe Morrissey. Come on, let's get him out of here. Can you make it out? By the time my sailing days, I could make out the Morse code pretty good, but it's too fast for me now. They're asking how many of us are alive down here. Tough on her. Yeah. Tim Bell, a new county clerk, showed up. He'd been over to Carson City. 
And as near as I can figure out, that leaves seven people still missing. We found five of them. They're alive in the vault. What about Paul? Well, four of them are all right. One of them's bad hurt. They didn't say which one. Sheriff, those people need air, and they need it bad. We've got to get that compressor over here from Galconda and get the compressor and the pipe and some line in there. Since I can't work in the courthouse, that sounds like a good job for me if somebody would show me where it is. I'll tell you something else we need, Sheriff. We need some thin iron rod. We're going to have to punch a hole through that wreckage so we can get an airline down there to them. Blacksmith shop. That's the best place for that. Well, yeah. let's get going. Hey, Clint, rustle up the team and wagon go with Hoss here. Mr. Cartwright, he's having trouble breathing. I don't know whether it's the air or, or if he's worse. Get, get, get one of those vegetables put it under his head. It'll be an hour before they can start to pump any air. Tell them it's got to be sooner. We won't last. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's thick and it stinks, but I've worked in minds where it's been worse, Peacock. Don't call me Peacock. I'll call you anything I like. And I'll tell you something else. I'm going to make you admit you lied on the witness stand, even if I have to tell you Alan from Lynn. Do you understand me, Peacock? Don't call me that! Stop that now. Both of you! The trial will be settled up in that courtroom, not down here. If we get out of it alive, it'll... No, we'll get out of here alive. They're going to have to come down that stairway. We're going to have to clear the top of that. Come on. See if we can get clear of away some of this stuff right here. They want to punch an air hole. They're asking if we're willing to risk it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Let's, let's get some cover right over there. All right, Joe, go ahead. Hey, come on, come on. So let's step out. Give me the sledge. Joe! Tap her light. Joe, try her again. One thing for sure, we're never going to get an airline down through this mess. What do we do now? I don't know. That fluid may not be plugged up all the way. to be the end of it. I hope so. It's not too bad. I've been in worse cavings. Johnny, he's not here. Uh, here I am. 
Are you all right? Yes. Where were you? Well, a piece of the ceiling fell down, knocked me in there. Mr. Cartwright told you to take cover in here. What were you doing in there? Now stop bickering, both of you, will you? Callie, take care of Gibson, will you? All right, listen, let's clear that debris away. <sighs> this is miners' work. You try and it'll all come down on your heads. Look, you two stack and I'll do the clearing, all right? Put the compressor right over here in the wagon right next to it. Let's hurry up. We only got about a half hour of daylight left. Looks pretty good, Hoss. Yeah, how long it'll be before we can get some air down there to him? I don't know. I'd say at least 15, 20 minutes. alone because I'll bring it all down on top of us. I can move it. I heard you were a timbering man. I was shoring, boss. Best on the Comstock. Spent three years. that warned old Wilderson that the stopes under us here were going to cave in. You know what thanks I got? He fired me. For warning him? Or oh, pinch a penny, Wilderson? He didn't want to spend money on new timbers. And he didn't want me around reminding him that he had to put them in. To hear the peacock tell it, I killed Wilderson for firing me. That's a lie, Mr. Cartwright. The truth is, I thanked Wilderson on the spot. I was tired of slaving in a mole hole and only seeing the sun one day a week. I wanted to go back to sea. I was a sailor like you. Aye. A man should be able to see the sun, Mr. Cartwright. Cartwright's the finest man I ever met. I, I've been thinking, what? I can help you get him out. I know every sick and stone in the building. Look, the most help you can be, Manny, is go somewhere and sleep it off. No, 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 I mean it, Hoss. I know every stick and stone. Right. The other way. as they'd let me. Look, I'm as ugly as a wagon load full of sin and yet the peacock's as pretty as a $20 gold piece. Who would you believe? Jonathan! Jonathan! That look on his face, he scared me. Hold it! 
right there. Put that gun down, Jonathan. He threatened to kill me. You heard him. Put down the gun. Johnny, please, no! You haven't got the guts to kill a mouse. So you lied for the man that did. Now, who was it? Oh, I had to lie. He's going to put me in jail. Did you hear that, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, I heard that. Let's shoot up that beam. Come on, push this. Come on, up. Come on, Eddie. Boss? Boss? I'm sober, boss. Look, look, I've been, I've been soaking my head under the pump, see? Yeah, yeah, well... Near it, anyhow. Listen, Tremaine won't listen to me, but you got to, Hoss. I helped build this building. Every freaking board. And I helped build the coal chute through the alley wall into the basement. Oh. Betty, they ain't a coal chute in all of Virginia City. Oh, no, don't be so persnickety. A coal chute is a coal chute, even if it's firewood that you chuck down it for the stoves. And I'm telling you, we cut one through the alley wall. You didn't go into the basement. But how come Paul ain't found it? I ain't sure. But I think they bricked it over when they put their records down there. Show me. Somewhere around here. It's been a long time, boss. I knew there had to be a thief in that front office, Mr. Cartwright. Little rotten timbers I was getting. Well, I wasn't the only one. Who forced you to steal? Tremaine. He was stealing, too. Wilderson caught him. So he killed Wilderson. And then he... he Forced me to lie to put the blame on Toby. Kelly. You must understand. I... Please understand. No. And I realize, Jonathan, that I have never known you. Sheriff. Yeah. Worst comes to the worst. I don't want murder on my tombstone. You just take it easy. Look, I'm not hurt that bad. Hurry up, I want to get back there. Not hurt that bad. One rib broken and two cracked. I don't suppose you'd listen to reason and not go back to work. That's right, I won't listen to reason. Just hurry up. All right. Go back.
back if you have to, but you be almighty careful. I'll keep an eye on him, Doc. Come on, let's go. Wait just a minute, young fella. You're not going any place till I've had a chance to look at that knee. Well, that's a waste of time. It's not the matter with my knee. Sit okay. down. Let him look at it. It's nothing wrong with that. Oh, come on. Come on. Sit down. Come on. All right. All right. I'll be Thanks, right sir. over. All right, Doc. Hurry up. The leg's not hurt that bad. Well, let's just take a look. Besides, I was hoping maybe we could keep Joe here with you. Oh, come on, Doc. It didn't work, did it? Candy. You've seen that cave in over there. Yeah. Well, how much longer do you think they're going to be able to survive? We're pumping air in down there now. Are you sure it's getting to them? I just thought it might be a good idea if... somebody else found Joe's paw. <laughs> A few minutes. We you mean you walked off and left this thing out of water and let it blow itself up? All right, all right. How long will it take to fix it? I had the parts half the night. In the meantime, those people down there are going to run out of air and they'll be dead before we can get to them. Thanks to you, mister. Well, there's still a chance. There's a coal chute down in that basement. A coal chute in Virginia City? Huh? Well, I don't believe that. Well, I do. We're going to find it. Come on, Benny. Them how long it's gonna be, and I'm getting no answer. to set this place on fire. We found it. We found it. So we'll cover it up. See, but you can make it. Well, Kelly, come on, get up there. No, Gibson first. Oh, get Gibson up there. Get up there quickly now. Tell him to send down a rope. Come on. Now, you 
go. Scramble. Come on, Peacock. Scramble for your life. Up you go. There's a lad. Go on. Oh, easy, easy. Guess you want to talk to me, Sheriff? I certainly do. Come on. All right, start pulling up, boss. Easy, fellas, easy. Take it easy. Easy, Adam, now. He's hurt. Don't hurt him. Pull slow. You got him, Candy? really bothering me, isn't it? I don't even remember twisting it when I got out of that cold shoot. Who's that for? Just what the doctor ordered. Hot water and Epsom salts. Well, the doctor may have ordered it, but I didn't. Yeah. No, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Paul, that's the only way to treat a sprained ankle. Hot Epsom salts water and no water. Wait, 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 wait. This ankle's not sprained, just twisted, that's all. Just twisted, not sprained. Sure. That's why Joe and I had to carry from the buggy, right? Well, you may have had a carry. I mean, that's true, but it's just a twisted ankle. I don't know. Just because just, it's twisted doesn't mean I have to have it. Why don't we just take off the slipper and the sock, and we'll take a look at it. It's not going to hurt anything. Come on, take it easy. Easy. I'm going to go as easy as I can. Something that isn't too bad, Pa. It sure is hurting. Easy. I'm doing it as easy as I can. Well, take a look at that. Well, just look at it. It looks pretty bad. It's pretty swollen. Now, the hot water isn't going to hurt it any. <clears throat> All right. Pull that, pull that pot right over here. Nice and easy. Ah! It ain't hot. It's boiling. Well, that's, that's what the doctor said. Hot as you could stand it. I can't stand it. Which is worse, the cure or the illness? Look, I know it hurts, but it's better than being in a cave. At least you won't have to see that place anymore. <laughs> what was that? Why was that? I was thinking about that. You know, I still need that book of records. That volume one, Yankee Meadows. Well, not right away, you're not. Not with this ankle. Well, that's that's what I was thinking. Since I'm not going to be able to walk for the next two or three days. Yeah, somebody ought to go in there and get it out of the debris. Yeah, sure glad you volunteered. You know, I, I really don't think the ankle's that bad. I mean, it's, it's not a sprain, it's a little twist in it. It's sprained. It's a sprain. It's, it's brass sprain. Yeah, I figured it would be. Yeah. <laughs> what? 
Is that all you take? Yep. I'll pick up what I need on the way. Hey, well, you know, Kenny, I sure wish I had two months off. Well, if you'd given up your vacation two years running, you'd have a long holiday now, too. Oz, you still haven't told us where you're going. Well, Candy, I, I keep telling you. Just gonna go, that's all. Go where I want to, when I want to. Well, Joe, Candy, <laughs> I'll be thinking about you when I fry that first big pan of fresh cold dry. <laughs> <laughs> have, have a good time. time. Have a good time. <laughs> Take care. Can I help you? You listen close now, you hear? Howdy, friend, can I help you? Yes, sir. You sure can. Oh, howdy, friend, can I help you? <laughs> yes, sir. I got a list here. Well, it looks like you're planning to do a little fishing. Yes, sir, sure am. It's been a long time. And it'll take me just a minute to get these things together. I got nothing but time. Catch him. Yeah, he, he's been in here before? Oh, yeah, a bunch of times. Never takes nothing worth nothing, just some little candles, that's all. Well, here's everything. Comes to a dollar eighty-five cents. Oh. Here. There's a couple. Keep the change. Thank you. And good luck with your fishing. Son and down a minute. You gonna put me in jail? Oh, no, I ain't gonna put you in jail. I, I just wondered what you was doing, that's all. I, I was making a wish. Huh? I was making a wish. You're supposed to light candles to make you a wish and then blow them out. That's why I took them candles, because I couldn't make no wish without them. Oh, I see. If you ain't gonna put me in the jailhouse, can I get my candles? They ain't hardly used up yet. Yeah, go ahead and get them. You make a lot of wishes? Yes, sir. What do you wish for? I wish my papa was white. out of a jail is not to steal. Yes, sir. But I ain't got no money to buy them. Well, one of these days you'll be a big guy, then you can get you a job and earn you some money. Papa's big, and he can't earn no money. Is that your horse? Yeah. Yeah, that's my horse. Sure is a big horse. Well, I need a big horse. That's the biggest horse I ever seen. Sure would like to ride on that horse. Where do you live? Out of ways. Well, it just so happens that I'm going to be riding out of ways. Would you like to take a ride with me? 
That'd be fine. Come on, get aboard. Now, since we're going to be riding together, I reckon we ought to get acquainted. I'm horse guard right. I is John O. Davis. John O. Davis. What does that O stand for? I don't know. It's just an O, I think. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you, John O. Davis. Johnny, how much further it is to your place? It's not far now. You're sure a long ways from home for such a little fella. Mom's probably worried to death about you. My mom got dead. Is that a fact? What about your pa? My pa's trying to make the food grow. Well, he's a farmer, huh? He was one time, but nothing seems to grow no more. That's why I wish my papa to be white, so things would go right for him. You figure things would go right for him if he's white, huh? I sure they would. Well, how can you be that sure? I know, that's all. Why else would I wish for it? Well, a lot of people wish for things, but... Did you ever wish your pa was black? tell you about yelling, boy? You gotta meet my friend. Howdy. What'd you say your name was? Horse guard right. Howdy. Yeah, that's right. This is my papa. Go in the house, boy. But papa... Go on inside. If my boy did something wrong, mister, I'll whip him. I'll whip him good. Oh, no, no, he didn't do nothing wrong. I'm not a runaway. I'm a freed man. I got my papers right here, all legal. They're all there. I swear we ain't done nothing wrong. Mr. Davis, I just brought your little boy home, that's all. Can we come out now? Yeah. This is my brother Jesse and my sister Beth. Howdy, Jesse, ma'am. My sister's a girl. Yeah. That's the way with sisters. She's a cook. She cooks good. You want to eat supper with us? John. I don't think Mr. Cartwright wants to eat with us. Oh, please. There's a whole mess of greens. John, that's enough. Yes, sir. Mr. Davis, I, I ain't one for turning down good home-cooked meals. Uh, that is, if you got enough. There's a whole mess. Please, Papa. All right. Beth said another place. Uh, I'll unsaddle my horse and be right with you. You want some more, Mr. Cartwright? Yeah, I don't mind for do. That's pretty tasty. Told you she's a cook. You know, you're sure right about that, Johnny. Uh, what sort of vegetables are those? I don't know. They grow all around here. On my birthday, we gonna have stew. Ain't that right, Papa? Yeah, that's right, son. If we get some meat. We're gonna get some meat, I told you. Well, how are you gonna do it, Papa? You ain't got no powder for that old gun of yours. Oh, if you need gunpowder, I got some out there in my saddlebags, if that's what you need. We don't need none, thank you. Papa, we need... I said we don't need it. Jesse, Papa said he'd get that meat. Mr. Davis, what sort of farming do you do? Corn and beans. Rain didn't come for a long time. Everything got dead. Well, that's, that's the way of the weather. But then it changes, and when it does, everything grows again. Except that we ain't got nothing to plant. No seed. Now that's enough. Can't the man eat his supper without having to listen to you grieving? What's the 
matter with Papa? He sure looked mad tonight. It's nothing, John. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, right, my, my Paul gets upset over things every once in a while himself. Things like what? Jesse. I'm just asking a question, that's all. Well, you know, things like when a job ain't getting done fast enough to suit him, that, that sort of thing upsets him. What's your Paul do then? Well, he just works harder to make sure the job gets done on time. I see. Then you wouldn't understand why my pa's mad. You see, he's mad because there ain't nothing to work harder at to get done. If my pa had something to work at, then he wouldn't have no need to get mad. Yeah. Well, what about work in town? Papa's never even been there. I tried. But I couldn't get none. Papa, he don't even know I tried. See, he don't want us to go to town either. How come? He never do say why. He just says he knows what's right, that's all. Why do you suppose he don't go to town? He don't go to town because he's scared of white folks. Papa's afraid, like Jesse says? No. If he is, it makes my wish that much better a wish. How do you mean? Because he wouldn't have to be as scared of white folks if he was white folks. You see? Yeah. Yeah, I see you, John. Look, I, uh, I better be running along. Hoss, don't go yet. I want to show you something. Please? It'll only take a minute. All right. Just a minute, but then I got to thank you, Paul, and then be on the way. Come on, then. Beth, thank you for the supper. I'm just glad you liked it. We ain't never had nobody over here for supper before. And it was nice. Yes, it was. Thank you. Come on, Hoss, hurry up. Hey, John, where are you taking me? I'll show you. It's not far. Right through the trees here. What? I wish in place. Sometimes I wish other places, but mostly I wish here. Well, I must say you picked a mighty pretty place. I know, but I ain't had much luck with my wishes. Well, John, you can't expect all your wishes to come true, you know. I know that. I just wanted one to come true, and I think it has. Oh? Yes, sir. See, when I wished today, the first thing I seen was you. Now, John, you didn't wish for me. I's not so sure. Maybe my wish was too hard for the Lord, so he sent me you to help my papa. Well, it was a pretty hard wish, all right. That's what I was thinking, so the Lord must have sent me you. Well, look, John, I... You can't help him, can't you? Well, John, even if I could, I, I'm not for sure that your pa had left me. Why not? Well, he just doesn't seem to be the kind of man that would look kindly on charity. What's that? Charity? Oh, it's, well, it's sort of like... Well, like when you give something to somebody for nothing, you know, to help them. There don't seem to be nothing wrong with that. Well, I, I didn't say there's anything wrong with it, John. It's, it's just that I, I just don't think it worked. I'm sorry. Don't have no luck with any wishes.
Davis. I hate to bother you again, but... Well, while I was out there saddling my horse, I got to thinking on something, and I'd like to discuss it with you if I could. Sit down. Thank you. This is... This is the thing I've been thinking about. See, where I come from, we got a lot of good farmland, but it ain't in use because ain't nobody knows anything about farming. We're all cattle people, you see. And, well, it so happens that the moment I got a lot of free time on my hands, and I thought maybe if, if I could learn me some farming, I could kind of surprise folks by going back there and putting all that land to use. You, you know what I mean? No, Mr. Cartwright, I'm afraid I don't. Well, what I'm trying to say is, you see, I got the wherewithal, and you got the know-how. And I thought maybe we could sort of, sort of team up, you know, just team up. You mean you want to work this farm with me? Yes, yeah, sir. I, I reckon that's about it. Why? Well, I, I just told you. It don't make sense. Why not? Well, you a white man. Huh. A white man be a good farmer, can't he? Yes, I guess so. How about it? Mr. Cartwright, we don't believe in charity. Oh, you won't have to worry about that. I'll do my share of the work, I'll guarantee you. There's a lot you can teach Mr. Cartwright, Papa. You're the best farm I ever did see. We might even grow a chicken. All right. I sure do hope we grow a chicken. John, how come you do that? I'm sorry, Papa. <laughs> I think I've worked harder the last two weeks than I have the past two years. There's no easy thing getting a farm going. Once you do, it's a beautiful sight to see. Things growing. Something mighty fine about the green things growing. Yeah, you must love it, the way you work at it. I've been farming since I was in Ohio and John. Left. Some more, Amy. I declare. He loves them chickens just like they was chilling. Hey, John. Don't feed them so much. Them's chickens, not turkeys. They look hungry. Chickens always look hungry. You just watch that feed, and that's enough. Go and help your sister. Yes, sir. Papa says that's all you can have. Hold it. He's seven. He was born when we, uh... He's moving west. How come you decide to move west anyhow, Sam? Land. Chance to work my own land. I saved enough money to buy me and my family's freedom. When I did, we upped and moved. How long did you work as a slave, Sam? Forty years. This old plow to be ready by now. Tomorrow that far field will be ready for planting. As soon as I get through here, I'll be out there to help you. There ain't no need for that. I can do that myself. No. I said I was going to do my share of the work, and I'm going to do it. That's right. But, uh, I was kind of thinking of asking you to do something else. Well, sure. Like what? It's the boy John's birthday. And I was wondering if you could do something about some venison or something. That is, if you don't mind. I do mind, Sam. I came here to learn farming, not to go hunting. Yeah, that's right. Sam, if you want venison, you'll have to go get it yourself. Let me have this plow, and I'll finish this job here and get my rifle in the house, and their shells in my saddlebag. Go on. You're the one who promised that boy, not me. That's right, I did. Get with it.
Jesse, you keep working. I'll be back soon. Where you going, Pa? Get me some venison, boy. Get me some venison. My stomach's so full, I'm gonna blow up. Well, it ought to be food. You ate more than I did, and that's saying some. If I eat like that all the time, will I get as fat as you? <laughs> John, Mr. Cartwright ain't fat. Well, now, Sam, if I ain't fat, what am I? Well, you big. Yeah, I'm big, but I'm also fat. Papa, this was the best dinner I ever did eat. Thank you, Papa. I think you ought to thank Mr. Cartwright. It was his gun. Yeah, but it was you that shot it. That's right. And Beth cooked it. Ain't no need to thank me. I think we ought to thank the Lord. That's a good idea, son. Dear Lord, we are so, all so busy thanking each other, we almost forgot to thank you. Lord, we don't talk to you as much as we ought to. Sometimes we forget. And when we do, we're so busy asking you for things, we forget to thank you for what you give us. So, Lord, we just want to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 She's learned, did you? Well, I had my doubts about it. <laughs> well, birds are pretty smart. Smarter than some people. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of smart birds, we got a few out there on the farm. They laid us some pretty eggs. Good, good. Say, don't I know you? Yes, sir. I think so. Let's have a look at those eggs before they hatch. We'll get them. Sir. Well, what do we got here? Let me carry him. Let me carry him. What you got there, boy? Eggs. I chickens give them. Oh, that's nice. Can I look at them? Well, what do you think of these eggs, Mr. Johnson? Nigger food, that's why. All right, you give them eggs back to my brother. We gotta sell them eggs. Well, now, 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 take it easy. Now, you might make me nervous, and now I drop all these eggs. Give me the door. Don't you try and grab nothing from me, nigger boy. Mr. Johnson, how far do you figure you can throw a, an egg? Well, let's go find out. Continue this, mister. You better have yourself a good doctor. What's this all about, Jesse? They said they didn't like no nigger food. Is that a fact? According to Mr. Titus, those eggs are worth 50 cents a dozen. How many eggs in that box? Four dozen. You owe this man two dollars. Pay him. You're making a mistake, sticking up with the likes of them. I said you owe this man two dollars. Pay him. Jess, get John, get in the wagon. See you in a minute.
You boys could have saved yourself a lot of trouble. The hens that laid them eggs are white. We're going to see them again, Mr. Johnson. We are going to see them again. You should have been there, Papa. Hoss hit that man so hard that I thought his whole head gonna come off. The young man didn't even say nothing. Yeah, he broke all them eggs, too. But Hoss made him pay. He sure did. How much is that? Is that a lot of money? Yes, yeah, son, that is a lot of money. Now, you and Jesse go and get washed up. It's almost time for dinner. Yeah, I'm hungry. Is you all right, Papa? Yes, son, I'm all right. Go and get washed up. You should have been there. Unhitched the mules and watered them. I reckon the boys told you what happened in town, huh? They told me. Well, it's over and done with. It won't happen again. I think it's going far afield. You're wrong, Hoss. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. About what? Them men. They'll be back. What makes you say that? I know them. You've had trouble with them too before, huh? Not them, but others just like them. They're the same everywhere. It's like they're from the same seed. They think alike, they act alike. They'll be back. So I didn't want my boys to go in that town. Well, Sam, I, I think you're making a whole lot more out of this than, than there. That's because you don't know. I do. I know. Well, you can't live apart forever. They'd have to go to town sometime. No, they wouldn't. Not if you hadn't come along. We was doing just fine. Maybe their stomachs did hurt a little from being hungry sometimes, but their hearts was fine. You see, right now, they think that most white folks is like you. But they're going to learn. Oh, yes, they're going to learn. Oh, Sam, no. Wait a minute. You're wrong, Sam. You're wrong about the folks in town. There's some good folks in town. Come in with me. What for? To meet the white folks? To meet the folks. Horse, it's not the same. Just having folks tolerating you and letting you be around is not like belonging and being a part of something. I went into town once when my wife was sick. I went to get her a doctor. He was nice enough to me. But he said he... Didn't doctor no colored folks. She lay on that bed. And she died. So you don't have to take me into town, horse. I've been there. the way we found them all, dead. John, he went off crying. What we gonna do? So you still think it's all over, horse? No, but it's gonna be. We go in town and file charges against them, too. What you gonna use for proof? Couldn't have been nobody else but them. Folks in town saw what happened there. They'll testify to that. They ain't gonna testify to nothing. What if they do? So what? You'll just give them a fine, turn them loose. And they'll be back. Next time, they won't stop by just killing a few chickens. You gonna let them two get by with that? You, you just ain't gonna do nothing about it? Yeah, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna take what few things we got here and I'm gonna pack that wagon and we're gonna get. Jesse, you get that wagon and start loading. Beth, you help me. Papa, they're our home. We can't leave. Jesse, you load that wagon, boy. You want them to know they scared you off? You want them to know they scared you off? <laughs>
So you're just going to run, huh? Yes, I'm going to run. You're the fellow that was telling me how hard you worked to be a free man. How you love the farm and love to put the seeds in the ground and make them grow. You're going to give all that up, huh? That's right. I thought you was a better man than that, Sam. I'm not just a man. I'm a black man. And don't you go thinking you know how I feel unless you're black, too. I love this farm. But I love my children more. I can plant corn again and make it grow. I can plant beans and make them grow. But I can't make my children grow again if they're dead. And that's why we're moving out of here. I understand you're being scared, but there comes a time when a man's got to fight. And they ain't gonna hurt them kids, I promise you that. I ain't gonna let them, I promise you I won't let them. Thank you, boss. Thank you for taking care of old Sam and his children. Oh, Sam, I didn't mean it like that. No, no, you're right, boss. Go ahead and take care of old Sam. Show his boys how the big white man always takes care of Papa. So that when they grow up, they won't forget that it's the white man who is the man. Howdy, boy. What you doing? the team. Papa, I don't think John's ready to travel yet. John ain't going nowhere. I am. I'm going to town. Go on, boy. Hitch the team. Yes, sir. Beth, you take care of John. I'll be back soon. Say, you keep out of this. You ain't taking care of me no more.
Titus. You know them two fellas we had trouble with the other day? Yeah, I know them. You got any idea where we can find them? Craig, the big one, owns the livery stable yonder. You could probably find him there. Thanks. Who's there? I said, who's there? I was talking to you, black man. Are you deaf? You whip my boy. Mr. Johnson, it's that boy's uh, pappy's come to pay us a visit. Well, ain't that nice. You had no call to whip my boy. Now, that's right. And it ain't the boy's fault he was born. It's your fault. Stay out of this. I will, just so it's even. Now, drop the bottle. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble over this. You let me worry about that. Now, get over there. Go on. They're all yours, Sam. some of your friends together and ride not to my place. Because we're not going to be there. We're going to move out just like you want us to. Because you're right. We're not the same, you and me. And I thank the Lord that we're not.
Jesse. Go tell John and Beth you're ready to go. I'm going to miss this place. But we got some seed and we got the makings of another farm somewhere. If I hadn't come along, you wouldn't even have to be leaving now. No, horse. Ain't your fault. Some people out there, the ones that hate you without even knowing you. Yeah. And them that, that want to help them and don't know how. You did help me, horse. There's some people out there. They think I'm a nigger. Something less than a man. And for the longest time, I believed it. But no more. And no matter what happens to me, my children are going to live. They're going to make out. And they're going to be proud that they're black. Papa, John doesn't want to come out. He doesn't want to say goodbye to Haas. Say goodbye. How come? I don't want to, that's all. Why? Because when you say goodbye, that means you go. I don't want you to go up. I want you to stay with us. Hey, hey, listen, you know, just because two fellas got to say goodbye to one another, that, that don't mean they ain't going to see each other again. You know, a lot of things happen from day to day, and in the meantime, you, you're going to have to help your pa. He's going to be starting a new farm, and you and old Jess and Beth are going to have to help him like, like I got to help my pa. Too little. Oh, you ain't too little. What are you talking about? Why, look how tall you are. You've grown a bunch since I've been here. Are growing that fast? You sure are. Well, I'll bet you the next time I see you, you'll you'll be as big as I am. You think so? Sure you will. You better get on and help our pa.
Drop the ordnance, boy. Nanada. Put both hands on top of your head. Making a mistake, mister. Don't cost near as much as you make it. Now get down off of that horse. Move inside, real gentle like. I'll decide who's making the mistakes. Just what the doctor ordered. You need more than food, Samuel. You have to look a fever. I'm all right now. Don't you worry. Hey, boy, you hungry? Uh, no, 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 thanks. You don't know what you're missing. The Nada here's one fine cook. She's half as good as she is with this rawhide, I believe you. I suppose I could have told her not to wet that rawhide. But that's a Shoshone for you. Thing worth doing is worth doing right. Look, you've got to be hungry. Give me your word you won't try nothing while we're eating. I'll have her free your hand so you can try some of this stew. When I'm finished? I'll be finished first. You get any ideas about dessert, that's up to you. You're sure, Samuel? It's all right, Nanata. Chasing strays, I can appreciate it. Then you work here, this place. Yeah. You're not one who hunts for the bounty. Nanada. We'll need more wood. Mm. 
She speaks good English. Yeah, sometimes just a little too much. She didn't say anything I couldn't read. First off, you're hiding in a Cartwright line shack. Second, that's a McClellan saddle sitting on that barrel out there. Generally, only one kind steals cavalry horse flesh and then rides it so hard it folds under him. If that's true, boy, you know what comes next. Yeah, maybe. You're running, all right? And that may be an army bullet in your shoulder. Non-coms don't usually go over there. What did you say, boy? Your boots. They're not standard issue, and yet they're not expensive enough to be an officer's. I say sergeant. Not less than 12 years in grade. Maybe sergeant major. The only thing I can't figure out is, is what outfit you're with. Henry repeaters haven't been issued west of Fort Kearney. Just how far from the flagpole was you born, boy? I'd say just a little bit farther than your desk, Sarge. But not too far to know if you're running, you're going to need help. With no supplies and no horses? I can get them for you. Now, let me get this straight. You volunteering to help me? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to trust somebody. And uh, that wound's not going to give you too much time to pick and choose. Tell him, Nanata. He speaks the truth. The look of fever is strong. By tonight... By tonight, I'll be back with medicine and all the help you need. No. I got all the help I need right here. Please, Samuel. If he brings no one. No. I'm not giving up. Not yet. What do you think you're doing? Let's see. I'm trying to give you a chance to prove one of us is right. You're playing a fool's game, boy. I'll be back by nightfall. I give you my word, I'll be alone. Not enough to trouble a vet, though. The Lord gives them doggies more brains, be a lot less trouble for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ed, Candy. Hello, sir. Candy, you headed back out to Ben's place? Well, not before morning. I've got to chase some strays. Well, that's soon enough to save me a ride out there. Wire just come through from Baker Station. Seems a deserter busted out of their stockade. Figure he headed this way. Oh, yeah? Well, keep an eye out for him. Good. There'll be a cavalry patrol through. Might be they'll want some help. Since Ben's got the most men, I thought he might help out with a couple if they needed. I'll tell him. All right. Shouldn't take too long. Man alone in this kind of country has got all the chance for the three-legged horse. station. I'm afraid I'll be putting you to a little trouble the next few days, Mr. Cartwright. Well, how's that, sir? I never like to bivouac my men in a town. Sheriff suggested your place. 
course, we'll pay for any food or staples we require. Well, you're welcome to anything you need, Captain. What brings you to this part of the country? We're after a deserter, Mr. Cartwright. Sheriff said he told your man. Candy, I believe he said. I haven't heard from Candy in three days. Doesn't matter. All we need from you is some food, grain, base of operations. It's quite a search your money for just one man. A very dangerous man, Mr. Cartwright. A coward, a thief, a deserter. A murderer. Yes. He killed Lieutenant Jameson, one of my best men. We found him shot in the back the night Bellis escaped. I mean to see that he pays for that. enough to work this weapon in case you get any ideas. You're hey, better off to uh, start on this if you want me to take that bullet out of your shoulder. Now, wait a minute, boy. You think I'm going to let you put a knife to me? You must trust him, Samuel. He's brought us a horse. So you can either ride him out of here or go out tied across him. It's your choice. Any prizes for dragging your feet. Corporal Henderson? Yes, sir. Then I'm ready to move, sir. Good. Mount up. Now, you're sure you don't want any of my boys to go along with you? It can be pretty rough country if you're not familiar with it. My men will manage all right. It's what they're trained for. I just thought I might save you some time. Sergeant Bellis' crime is against the Army. It's our responsibility to apprehend him. Good day. Good. A fellow like that really makes you want to run out and join the army, doesn't it? Well, we still have a ranch to run. I suggest you run it. Yes, sir. <laughs> That'd be the whiskey. Here, try this. How was she? When your fever broke, I told her to get some rest. She's a good woman. Nanata's my wife. Well, then you owe it to her to tell me what's going on. 
Let's just leave it the way it is, boy. No. Samuel, no. You cannot leave it the way it is. This one has saved your life. He's brought a horse, a chance for us. You owe him the truth. If you do not speak, I will. There's no shame in speaking the truth. All right. All right. But you know one thing. You sign on, it's for the duration. This outfit can't afford no short timer. Cowardice in the face of the enemy, that's uh, not a very pretty charge. We lost seven men at Claymore Wells. Someone had to pay. And I had refused to obey an order. You were right. Small patrol of men with single shot weapons don't stand a chance against these. Only four of us made it back to the fort. Under the circumstances, Lieutenant Jameson was willing to reconsider the insubordination. But the captain wasn't. Only an insane man would believe the Indians was equipped with Henry's. So Captain Arno decided it wasn't superior firepower that affected my judgment, but cowardice. The lieutenant, he tried to help Samuel. It was he who opened the stockade that night. Jameson helped him escape? And don't ask me to explain it. He had the notion that together we could prove what had happened. So you ran from a court martial. These stripes belong to me. I earned them. I never shamed them. Lieutenant Jameson said we could save them. It was the only chance I had. Well, where is he? The lieutenant is dead. He'll probably lay that on my doorstep, too. The same rifle that hit me hit him two or three times when he was running from the stockade. Where did you get these? Lieutenant Jameson left them with Nanata. Check it. No markings, no trademark. But it's a Henry inside and out. Did he tell her where he got him? No, no chance of that. But he did leave me a name. Latham. And Virginia City. Latham, we had a... We had a gunsmith by that name. But he left some time ago. But that can't be. He's got it marked right here on the map. Sarge, you don't know this area very well, do you? No, sir. Well, that little circle includes ten sections of the roughest country in Nevada. There's absolutely nothing there, except some old worked-out silver claims. There's got to be something there. A sheen shop or a place where they make these things. I've got to find that place. Well, maybe you don't. Sarge, there happen to be some very good people around here. And one of them happens to be the sheriff. Now, if you think you can set a horse... Look, boy, you ain't thinking I'm turning myself in. If you want those stripes back, it's the only way. No, it ain't the only way. You're forgetting one thing. My trouble ain't with your sheriff. It's with the army. And they didn't believe me the last time. But you got the rifles. Isn't that enough? Lieutenant Jameson didn't think so. It is true. We cannot go back until we have some proof. When you get proof, then what? The army is his life. He must go back. All right. I'm going with you. Just like that, you cut yourself in, huh? Well, I got to. You're my prisoner. I'm your prisoner? Ain't you forgetting who's holding this gun? Got more brass than a colonel's cuspidor. Corporal, so you're back in plenty of time. Still some daylight left. No good to carry you out, home. We'll keep the same pace tomorrow and walk the next day. No luck, huh? No. Well, we rode today, a jackrabbit would have to hunt for company. Uh, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, sir. I'll need five fresh remounts in the morning. I trust you can provide them. Of course. Of course. 
Good. Oh, Captain. May I have a word with you? Yes, what is it? Captain, are you satisfied with everything we've been doing for you? Quite all right. And will you please tell me why you act as if I were your enemy? Enemy? Yes, sir. That's a strong word. Well, it's a valid one, just the same, though, isn't it? Mr. Cartwright, you have to remember I'm a soldier. You and I see things differently. Yes, it's true enough. It's not only because you're in uniform and I'm not. And it's not only me. You seem to resent all civilians. Oh, but you forget. It's wealthy, influential citizens like you who pay my salary, buy my clothes, put a roof over my head. I couldn't resent you. You support me. We support the government. The government supports you, sir. Yes. It does, doesn't it? But not quite the same style. Good day. Let's head up this wash. Give these horses a rest? Look, recruit, I know horses. If it's a shoulder mine you're worried about, you can forget it. It's recruit now, huh? Is that a rank uh, higher or lower than boy? <laughs> Depends on what outfit you're in. <laughs> Want to go down and up? Sorry? This, uh... Outfit, turning out the Henrys. How big a place do they need? Oh, one large building, or to every small one. They'll need a forge, a lathe. You still got the map? Samuel! Proud to watch them. It'll be a little tougher from here on, though. They're bound to know we need feed and water. It's the first thing they'll cut off. And sooner or later, they'll move in and find our tracks. Yep. Well, we better get moving. We sure ain't looking for mine shacks, either. What they need is a building big enough with a floor strong enough to support that machine. You got any ideas? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, there was a place like that. It was uh, south of Garner Falls. A man named Crawford there sold machinery to the mines until they played out. Recruit? You just might do. Thanks. <laughs> I thought there was a fire there. We may find another menagerie. I guess I could get you the sign for this. All right. What do you have, six bales there? Yeah. They're gonna need it tonight. Captain drives the animals as hard as he does the men. Pretty hard man, huh? Yeah, the way he's pushing, he's gonna have them shooting at shadows before long. Of course, I guess most of the troopers would just as leave do that if it comes to firing on the sergeant. You mean Bellis? I, I thought he was a deserter, a killer. Yeah, that's what they say. There's plenty of troopers that'd take a bullet for that man. Some of them have. Well, uh, thank you kindly. My pleasure. Take care. Oh, where are you off to? Thanks, Ray. I, uh... I just thought I'd go on out and help Canning with the strays a little bit, keep him out of trouble, you know. 
Are oh, you volunteering to round up strays? Uh, no, but to be honest with you, I'm volunteering to get away from Captain Arnholz. He's not exactly a barrel of laughs, you know. No, that's a fact. Oh, he's a better man, isn't he? Yeah, what's he so bitter about? Well, Joe, his army career hasn't been exactly spectacular. In command either comes to a man or it passes him by, and it must have passed him by an awfully long time ago. Yeah, well, if it's all right with you until he leaves, I'd, I'd kind of like to stay over there. Well, yeah, you're fine. Thanks, bud. Take it easy. All right. No sign up ahead. A man can't cross this country without leaving his mark. All right. Then we'll turn east, work our way back to the Ponderosa. But, sir, if he'd have moved east, we should have cut his trail by now. You heard my orders, Corporal. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. to me. Yeah, sure don't. Good work, recruit. Let's go get in the knot and work our way down there. Sorry, Samuel. You don't need to be in another. You just saved your Sam a lot of trouble. I was just coming to look for you fellas. You found us. Assemble a Henry in three minutes, blindfolded. And this rifle you say led you to seek us out? Took it off of Shoshone. I figured it'd be my ticket. You see, ordinance is all I know. It ain't often a job presents itself to an unemployed sergeant. Deserter, you mean? I don't like it, Mr. Latham. I smell like trouble. Would I bring her if I was looking for trouble? Yes. 
That makes some sense. What about him? Stockade sells empty quick when the doors open. You don't have to worry. He's a good man. All right. You're right about one thing. We do need good ordnance men, but we insist on the strictest security. Do that, then do your job, and you'll leave here rich men. We do no regulation. You don't have to worry about that. I won't. However, mine is not the last say in the matter. Until you're cleared by my partner, we can't let you do anything too important. Then. I'll take your matches, flints, tobacco, anything that burns. A uh, precaution, you understand. Well, what about her? She goes with me. For now, she's my hand. All right. Later, we can find something in the kitchen for her. Come on, this way. All right, hold it. Inside. Somebody here in a minute to show you what to do. I could do as good as that. You've got to treat Wood tender, like a woman. Mm. But not now, she can probably turn out enough for both of us. Well, that's as crooked as a dog's hind leg. Well, I didn't intend to make this my life's work, you know. Sometimes Samuel is more loud than helpful. Yeah. Here. I'll show you. Feeling I'm gonna have plenty of time to learn. You got any ideas how we're gonna get out of here now that we're in? Just take it easy, recruit. As long as they're convinced I'm who I say, we're all right. First, we'll meet their partner. Then we'll turn in our resignation. Well, that last resignation you turned in was mighty close. Another? The recruit needs convincing. Well, that's what I call conservation of firepower. It's tactics that's important, recruit. Just cut across tracks, headed toward Garner Falls. Looks like two, maybe three horses. It could be that... I think my orders said you were to work north and further east. Seems your sergeant's insubordination has left its seed in all of you. No, sir. Then I'll give you a chance to prove that. You may take the patrol, Corporal. Your orders? Sweep north and east, sir. Very good, Corporal. Yes, sir. Forward! Oh! Do 
You the one called Candy? It's him. Randy, I showed up outside looking for you. Bring him. Seen the likes of him before, did you? If you think we led him here, you're dead wrong. chance at you. And this is the man the army's looking for? Right. Joe, I know it's hard to believe, but Sergeant Bellis and I are working together. It was hard to believe is putting it mildly. Now, according to those charges, he's done everything but burn down the White House, including murder. Those charges were false. That's the truth, Joe. Thank you. All right. I can take your word for it. Okay, after stumbling into this place, I believe almost anything. You got any bright ideas on how we're going to get out of here? We did. Captain Arno must be moving his troops this way if our trail was clear enough for you to find us. Now, from what I could see of Arno's tracks, he's way, way east of here. I'm sorry, recruit. I'd give a furlough in New Orleans to have that little gun back. Uh, you still have those two bullets, don't you? Yeah. Let me have them. Sergeant, what does a manual say when your first plan of strategy fails? Well, what are you driving at? Improvise, Sergeant. Improvise. Improvise. gonna work, eh? If you don't, I'll give you your money back. Thanks a lot. It'd be better if it wasn't for those Henrys out there. These rifles are an another responsibility. for you. We've got trouble. You fret too much, Latham. Trouble anticipated is trouble solved. Come on. Somebody's coming this way. Captain. It's 
Sir, you can't imagine how glad I am to see you. You're going by your tracks. I never... Sorry, sir. They got you, too. Take these people outside and shoot them. I don't understand. I do. The captain's the man they've been waiting for. The missing partner. Take them outside. Let's get this over with. You gonna kill all of them? Yes. All but Bellis will be the innocent victims of a deserter. A deserter I was forced to kill when he would not surrender. <laughs> That, trooper. Corporal, that could be gunfire. But that's worse. We've already come further than the captain said. I don't hear you, trooper. Forward, ho! Captain Arnold into custody. What? Bellis! You're a deserter and a traitor! You think these men will listen to you? Corporal, arrest that man! Wait a minute, Henderson. Come on, I want to show you something. <laughs> Here, take a look at this. The same gun that cut down our men at Claymore Wells. You can find some more of them just like it in that building. Anderson, I gave you an order. And I'm giving you one, Captain. Lay down your gun and come peaceably back to the post. Let them decide who's guilty. Anderson, carry out your orders. Ellis, can you prove what you just said? I've got enough witnesses to hang him. All right, Captain. Lay down your gun like the sergeant said. This is mutiny. You'll either hang or spend the rest of your life at hard labor. I'll take that chance, Captain. Troopers, disarm the Captain. i 
more of them around here help me. Get them too. You betcha, Serge. Sergeant, you have the judge advocate contact us here at the Ponderosa. And we'll be there to testify whenever you need us. That I will do. Thank you, Trooper. Oh, it's Trooper now, huh? Two of the best I ever had beside me. Oh, well, I think the least he can do is give us a little raise in rank. After all, he's the one who's going to get the medal, you know. Mm. <laughs> you boys don't know my colonel. For every regulation I broke, I'll bend and pick, walk and tote, run and sweat. I thought you loved the Army. Well, I do, but it's kind of like a good woman. Couldn't love them an awful lot. But it ain't all honeymoon. <laughs> See you, Troopers. Take good care. luck, Sergeant. <laughs> well, I think we better report, too. Report to who? The General Cartwright. I'm sure he's got a little running and sweating for us to do, too. Yeah, I'll bet he does. <laughs> Probably the last shipment we'll be getting in from Washington this year. I could make you a good price on the barrel, ma'am. Well, I don't think we could use the whole barrel, but... Oh, they're good keepers. I think, um... Hi. And they're so tasty. Maybe if you just want a bushel or two, Hi. eh? Oh, no, thanks. I don't even like apples. How about a bushel of rubies, then, You haven't changed a bit. You have. You're prettier. I, I knew it. Out of... <laughs> I knew it was you the minute I heard your voice. I knew it was you from across the street. The way it tilts your head. What are you doing in town? How long you been here? Two days. I'm going to live here. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I've thought about you a lot. I'd be silly to say I haven't. Just wondered what you were doing. Because I figured you'd be married and settle down by now. Are you married? No. No, same old bachelor. <laughs> It's good to see you. Come on. What? Let's go have a cup of coffee and sit and talk for about 10 or 12 hours. I can't, Joe. I'm sorry, but I can't. Not now. Why not? It's so good to see you. Trouble. Wait. We can't stay in Virginia City.
There you are, Marshal. Thank you. Sheriff Crombie said that you could have the office and any help I could give you. It's very kind. I got a couple things to take care of down the street. See you later, Bill. Yeah, See you later. Candy. Hello, Joe. Hi, Clint. Oh, uh, my son Joseph. Marshal Calhoun. Marshal. Oh, my. Now, what's said here is not to be repeated outside of this office. Is that understood? Mm -hmm. It concerns a currency shipment, $90,000, from the Mint in San Francisco to the Virginia City Bank. Now, word might have leaked out about this, so we're taking some unusual precautions. Using an ordinary buckboard with two men, a driver and a guard. If you look at the map here... Now, they'll be leaving Truckee from the south, and with your permission, turn here, take that private road of yours all the way across to Ponderosa, and come into Virginia City from the west. Long way around, huh? Well, since we know that road pretty well, why don't we have uh, Hoss and Joe and Candy and I patrol it and make sure there are no strangers around? Well, thank you. That was my next request. And my deputy, Wade McPhail, can make the final sweep. Well, we'll be waiting. Anything else? That's it. Fine. Good boys. Mr. Cardra, you coming, Joe? I appreciate it. Yeah. Anything we can do, you know that. What's the matter with you, anyhow? <sighs> nothing. Nothing. I'm fine. He does look a little dazed. Yeah. What's the matter? You get kicked by a mule, buddy? No, I didn't get kicked by a mule. Guess who I just saw? Who? Emily Anderson. Here? In Virginia City? 20 minutes ago, in front of the mercantile. Did I hear you say Emily Anderson? Yeah. She's in town. She's gonna live here. Hmm. I'll tell you about it on the way home. Uh, who's Emily Anderson? A gal that uh, Joe met down in Monterey about four or five years ago. He's gonna marry her. Paul wrote a letter inviting she and the family up. Letter came back unopened. He ain't never heard from her since. What's his name? That won't add anything. Now, you let me be the judge of that. What's his name? Joe Cartwright. Cartwright? Cartwright's a pretty important piece. I guess they are. Knowing somebody like that, how come you married me? Because I wanted to marry you. Please, Wade, believe me. That's why I want to get away. Oh, I'd believe you. Look. We're in a new town. I've got a new job. Deputy Marshal in charge of the new Virginia City office. You meet Joe Carvite on the street. You want me to give up something I've been working for nine years to get? Yes. Because I love you. Because I don't want anything to happen to our well, marriage. Well, what's going to happen? No, he's not going to bother you. I guarantee you, he's oh, not going to bother you. Oh, it's not that. Well, what is it? Well, come on, Em, speak to me. I'm not sure how I feel about him. The fire never went out. You're still in love with him. No, I, I didn't say that. I... Wade, now listen to me. I'm not sure how I feel. There's still some fire left. You're still in love with him. Wade, now listen. I'm not sure. If Joe Cartwright and I see each other, well... Now that's the truth. And that's a fair warning. And that's why I want to leave. Please, Wade. A man walks by and we pick up and run? No, Em. We're staying right here. Are you so sure of me? If Joe Cartwright can take you away from me, then our marriage isn't much. we better find out. You might uh, start by putting things away. This place looks less like a freight shed and more like a home. I'll be back around midnight. The burial chamber is located...
located in the center of the Great Pyramid, and it is here that the mummy of the Pharaoh Khufu, or as the Greeks called him, Cheops, was laid to rest with all the treasure and plunder of his reign. I visited the chamber, a dark, oppressive room, lit only by torches, long since looted of all its wealth, weighed down by tons of masonry. May I have the next slide, please? One of the women of Cairo, they always go about in public totally veiled. If I had so much as caught a glimpse of her face, it would have meant instant death. I've got to stop a few minutes, Doctor. We have to pause, ladies and gentlemen, to make some adjustment in the mechanism. Would someone turn on the house lights, please? Imagine that. Pile up all them rocks just to bury yourself. Bury yourself. so many times I didn't get the answer. Why the letters returned? Yes, I wrote the park. Here's the people I stayed with in Monterey. They said you'd gone. They didn't know where. San Francisco. Oh, Joe is my father. They didn't mind just squaring me around. The dances, the picnics, riding together. Oh, Joe, that was the most wonderful time of my life. Last night, before you left, and you brought up the subject of marriage. Well, he moved us inside of a week. He said you were too impulsive, too wild. I tried to sneak your letter, but it burned it. I even tried to run away. He locked me in my room. Oh, Emily, I don't care. All I know is that I have you now, and I'm holding you. Oh, John. Oh, I had to see you tonight. And in the spring, this great temple is almost totally submerged by the floodwaters of the Nile. In fact, here you see a native boat moored in the very gateway of the same temple you just saw. I love you. edifices ever erected in the history of man.
my wife. I'm a fool to get in a street fight and lose my dignity. But he's going to keep me on. Thanks a lot, Em. Don't call me that. I despise it. Oh, I'm sorry. Emily, you shamed me tonight. You shamed yourself. It wasn't my fault. You wouldn't listen to me. Oh, well, it's not going to happen again. You know, your father told me. He said that what you need is a rough bit in the mouth and a strong hand on the reins. And from now on, that's what you're going to get. Put on your ring. Did you hear me? Where is it? Uh. Now this says you're mine, and it stays right there. You leave it there. You're hurting me. Behave like a wife should, and I won't have to. Now get in. What are you doing out here? I had to come to apologize. Joe, I'm sorry that I didn't tell you I was married. Oh, that's all right. Anybody else in your family you haven't told me about? No. No, no children, nothing? No, and you are angry, and I can't blame you. You should have told me, Emily. Joe, if I told you, would you have held me in your arms? And would you have told me that you still love me? No. Well, that's why. Joe. Joe, I had to know. I know that... that I love you. All right, it's been said. I don't think either one of us is the better for it. We've got nothing to talk about, Emily. You're married. Your husband made that very clear the other night. Joe, do you think my marriage was made in heaven? It wasn't. It was made by signing a county register with my father at my elbow. It was made by a little man droning words that I was just too tired to care about. Don't you understand why I had to talk to you? Don't, don't you see? All I see is that you're married. Joe. Joe, we can get it back. We deserve it. Joe, let's, let's go away. Anywhere you say. Just like that, huh? 
this very instant. I'm as much as told Wade that, that there's nothing left, and what I haven't said, he must know. Joe, marriage is in the heart, true marriage. And, and you're in my heart. And I don't think you can look at me and say that I'm not in yours. No, Emily, you're there. Which way do we go, darling? North, south? We go in opposite directions, Emily. Go home to your husband. Joe. Take it easy, I'll get you some help. Guns, both of you. That's my brother. I know that, but I don't know you that well. And I'm a careful man. Now go ahead and help him. Is he alive? Yeah, but barely. He's hurt bad. I gotta get him to the doctor in a hurry. We will. It occurs to me you're an awful long way from where you're supposed to be. So was Joe Cartwright. And so was this. He hasn't moved or said a word. That's understandable. Shocked. Heavy loss of blood. That long, rough ride in a buckboard. I'll stay with him tonight. Thank you, Doctor. He's young and healthy, Ben. Rest is what he needs now. And what I need is coffee and a sandwich. He's resting, Marshal. Will be for some time. Did he say anything? Well, he uh, he was unconscious and has been all along. Hasn't said a word. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. 
But he will make it, won't he? I'm sure he will. But how soon can I talk to him? Tomorrow, maybe. More probably the day after. At law. Not even then, if he develops a fever. Well, I'm sure he'll be all right. I, I just want to get the doctor some food. Huh? You two saw the buckboard? That's right. Ken and I rode out early. Went along either side of the road to make sure there was no ambush. We rode all the way from the grove to center road. When we saw the buckboard coming, we, uh, we got way back up off the road in case they might be a little nervous. We saw them both. They waved to us. Uh, they were all right at that time. Joe was, uh, oh, 10, 20 minutes behind us. And, uh, your deputy was supposed to be the same distance behind him. Well, then, if you rode all the way from the grove, you went past the place where it happened. That's right. Right by it. As a matter of fact, we, we flushed a, a flock of crows right there on that spot, didn't we? Yeah, if there had been anybody around there, the crows would have been gone. Matches what I found out there. Tracks left by a wagon, a team, and four different riders. You, Hoss, your brother, and my deputy. Nobody else. That kind of narrows it down to two suspects. My deputy and Joe Cartwright. Well, I know Joe Cartwright, and I don't know your deputy, so I vote for him. With me, it's the other way around. I don't know Joe Cartwright. I do know Wade McPhail. He's worn that badge and worked for me for nine years. Nine years of excellent record. Marshal, your deputy McPhail was four or five miles from where you're supposed to have been. Tell them what you told me. The buckboard was late. That's right. It was. I figured something went wrong, and I went to find out. McPhail, wait for me outside. I'll be with you in a minute. I don't know whether your deputy shot that driver in a guard or not, but I do know that he tried to shoot Joe Cartwright in the street last night. We've heard his story. We haven't heard Joe Cartwright yet. And in case you're wondering, I don't believe anything until it's been proven. I'll keep an eye on both of them. Excuse me, Emily. Oh, hey, that's all right. There's mail on the table. What happened to all the fire and fury? Uh, the storm's blown over. Well, that was a pretty fair gale while it lasted. It's a good-looking fellow, that young Cartwright. Of course, he's not exactly seven feet tall, like you led me to believe. I don't think he'd light up a room just by walking in. Wait. Please don't make fun of me. Pot roast? And brown gravy. It's my favorite meal. <laughs> I know. So, we're gonna pick up the pieces and put them back together and start all over again, huh? I'd like to. Wait, I think we can. Maybe you're right. I thought you'd have more done by now. Oh, I should have. I went out. Mm. Shopping in town? Yes. What'd you buy? Oh, I was looking for some material for those curtains upstairs, but I couldn't find a thing I liked. You want to try that again? Wait, well, don't play cat and mouse with me. It's part of my trade. Only works when the mouse has something to hide.
I saw you with him. You followed me. Duty took me out that way. Sit down. I'll have to take off the rope. Now that pot roast can wait. quite know what to do with you. I could throw you and your clothes out on the road. You'd give me cause enough encouraging another man. No, I didn't encourage him. Well, you certainly did last night. But not today. He uh, told me to meet him. Did he? Yes. I forbade it. And he just crooks his finger and you go scooting off to meet him. He said if I didn't, he'd make trouble for you after last night. You threatened me? Well, not in so many words, but it was plain enough. I went because I was afraid for you, Wade. They're such a powerful family. Yes. I'm beginning to learn that. If he'd come here, I could have told him right then that I didn't want to see him again. But it was a note pushed under the door. I didn't even see who brought it. Signed by him? Well, of course. Oh, I should have known you want to see it. I burned it. I was ashamed. Well, that helps a little. What did he want to see you about? He wanted me to go away with him. But I told him no, and that was the end of it. Did he say when? Right then. Did he say where? South, New Orleans. Just that far, New Orleans? I didn't really listen. South America. Family like his, Scandal and all, that's what I'd do. Well, he did say something about a ship. Go on. A fine house, servants. High living costs a lot of money. Even rich men don't have that much cash in their pockets. Did he show you the money? Wait, I told him I wouldn't go away with him. I have to know. Did he have the money? Did he say he could get it? What difference could it make? Tell me. He said there'd be lots of money. Would be. Would be. For sure. Yes. How many times do I have to tell you? Once more, and not just to me. Go and take the supper off the stove and get your shawl. How long after you left Joe did you hear the shots? Oh, uh, it was a long time. Did you give any thought to them? No, I just supposed it was somebody hunting. Emily, I know this has been very unpleasant and embarrassing for you. And for you, Wade. For what you've told me could be very important. There's something going on that I haven't been told about. What is it? You didn't tell her? Uh, well, well, no. I, I figured what, what she has to say would mean more if she didn't know. I see. Emily, there was an attempted robbery on the Ponderosa today. Two men were killed. Joe Cartwright. He's seriously wounded, unable to talk as yet. However, the doctor says he will recover. Now, you haven't been under oath here. Is there anything you'd like to add to what you've already told me? Or change? No. All right, Emily, thank you. You made my job a lot easier. Wade, you can take her home. I'll let you know if I need her again. Well, come on, Emily. Let's go. See you, 
shot you. No. All I could see was the, was the guard and the driver. I fired the warning shots. And next thing I knew, I was here. Two more questions, Marshal. That's all. Before the shooting, you talked to Mrs. McPhail. What about? That's personal. It has nothing to do with the shooting. Might be helpful if you did answer. She, uh... She wouldn't leave her husband. I talked her out of it. That's all, Marshal. We'll try again tomorrow. All right, I'll be back tomorrow. And I'll keep coming back until I know exactly what happened out there. Cartwright found the driver and the guard shot, but Cartwright didn't see who shot him. Right. And there were no strangers out there. That's been established. The driver or the guard might have shot. Or I could have. You Cartwrights are big people around here, and I'm just a stranger. And you've got the hangman's not all the time. Well, that's not true. Mr. Cartwright, I've got a question for you. It, it might throw some light on this. Answer it for me if you're not afraid to. You ask it and I'll answer it. You're rich. But would your son be able to lay his hands on enough money to pay for two people to go to South America and keep them living in style for two or three years? No. All right. Take that with what my wife told you, and you got motive for robbery and murder. Your wife said she refused to go with Joe Cartwright. So she did. But if a man is foolish enough to think a married woman might run off with him, he's a fool enough to think that $90,000 in cold, hard cash might persuade her. Well, you just think whatever you want to think. Marshal, I'll see you at the Ponderosa in the morning. Sit down. Deputy, could we be alone for a few minutes? Certainly, Marshal. You've been wearing that badge for nine years. You should know there are two ways to investigate a crime. One way, the wrong way, Keep bending everything you find to make it fit the way you want it to fit. Now, that's what you're doing. Am I? The other way, you keep an open mind. You keep digging until you have all of the evidence from all of the witnesses. Now, you may not find what you want to find. You're going to you... find Joe Cartwright innocent. Let's have that badge. He's going to be all right. Yes, he's going to be all right. I came here, Mrs. McPhail, because I wanted to find out why you lied about my son. Mr. Cartwright. Now, I know Joseph. Why did you lie? I didn't say anything that would hurt him. 
everything you said placed him under suspicion of murder. You painted the picture of a, an excited young man, eager to run off with another man's wife. And those who don't know my son could very easily believe that. And there are some who could look at you and find you motive enough for robbery and murder. Well, I know that's not a compliment. No. I didn't come here to flatter you, Mrs. McPhail. I came to find out how long you're going to stick to that story. It's not a story. You're going to have to tell it in court. Under oath, Mrs. McPhail. There's Joseph there, looking at you, listening to you. Are you going to be able to do that? Don't badger my wife, Mr. Cartwright. All I ask is that you tell the truth. I did. I did! Cartwright! Not till I tell you. Calhoun took my job, my badge. No surprise, I knew it was going to happen. Well, I didn't. I'm sorry. Get out. I'm sorry for you both. <laughs> You've seen a ghost. Everybody. The Cartwrights, the sheriff, the doctor, they're all out at the scene. Seen of... the shootings? So? Well, they didn't ask you to go. I didn't expect them to. Oh, but they should have. Unless they were expecting to find something that. Did you do it, Wade? Me? Ninety thousand in cold cash, and the thought never crossed my mind. You asked if I did it. You know Joe Cartwright didn't? Could you still see him when you heard those shots? That's not what you told me in the marshal. Another lie, Emily? Leading hard on that shovel made a good print. It looks a little big. But I have the left boot of one of those other pairs. Marshal, uh, Mr. Cartwright, uh, my wife has something to tell you. I lied. Joe didn't want to go away with me. It was the other way around. And I could still see him when I heard the shots. He couldn't have killed those men. Thank you, Mrs. McPhail. But Wade didn't do it either. Now we know that. 
Joe told us something this morning. We let me help. He told us he'd never been near that hole that they were digging to bury the money in. These are the boots he was wearing that day. They were boot prints all over the place. I saw them myself. Yeah, but Joe's boots didn't fit any of them. Those do? These do. Who do they belong to? Belong to the driver and the car. The way it looks, the driver did the digging, and my guess is the guard stood over him with a gun. I know it won't help much, but I'm I'm sorry. I think we're all sorry for a lot of things. Wait. You'll be needing this. The time I got my patient back to Ponderosa. I know how you must feel about me. So, um, why don't I go on ahead and I'll be packed and out of the house by the time you get there. You're probably right about how I feel. But you don't have to go. Wait. I do want another chance. And if you'll give me another chance, I promise... No, Emily. Don't make promises you can't keep. All I ask is... just say you'll try. I will try. 